TDD is often seen as being notoriously difficult to learn. But I don't think that's correct. TDD isn't hard, it's easy. It's something else entirely that makes it difficult to learn. And that shouldn't put you off because it's the whole reason that you should want to learn TDD in the first place. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content here today, hit like as well. Test-driven development is a controversial topic, but I'm a hardline test-driven development developer. I believe that however good or experienced you may be as a software developer, you'll do a better job with TDD than you will without it. If you're unfamiliar with why I think that this is the case, do check out this video. Test-driven development gives us a first look advantage on the quality of our design. From the most important perspective of all, that of a consumer of our code. In addition to this increased focus on design, we also get the tests. After every small change that we make, we can run our tests and verify that our code continues to work as we would expect it to. It may be surprising how often this is not the case, even for very good programmers in the absence of test-driven development. We all make mistakes and software is a complex, fragile thing where it's very easy to make mistakes indeed. Try something for me. Write a message, an email, a short document, maybe three to 500 words on any topic that you like to anyone that you like in your normal preferred native human language. Just write it and then put it aside. Don't go back and read it through until the next day. Next day, then read it through and it's full of typos and doesn't say what you meant, right? I think that you'll probably be surprised by how many mistakes you've made in this little experiment. If you find anything surprising or funny, let us know in the comments below. This is why editing is such an important part of professional writing, to allow us to hone the text so that it's easy and nice to read, as well as being understandable and useful in that sense. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some data that backs up my view that test-driven development helps us to create better software faster and also show you that the barriers to adopting test-driven development aren't as big as you think. I'll also include a few code examples that demonstrate the difference between good and bad TDD style tests. Once you make this change in perspective, you'll realize that adopting test-driven development is actually easier than you thought and only enhances your skills and experience. Let me pause there and say thank you to our sponsors. We're extremely fortunate to be sponsored by Equal Experts, Transfic and Semaphore. All of these companies offer products and services that are very well aligned with the topics that we discuss here every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering, click on the links in the description below to check them out. So we need to review our work, whether it's text or code. Code is even more error prone than text because the thing consuming our code is the ultimate in pedantry, a computer. So as well as everything else, our words have to work as code to work precisely. There's no nuance or room for interpretation by another human being here. So what are our chances of getting all of this right first time? Checking our work is essential and normal in programming, whether we choose to use test-driven development to do the checking or not. So really, the only question is, what's the most effective way to check our work? Certainly, I'd argue that test-driven development is a very strong candidate, being arguably more efficient and demonstrably more effective in terms of code quality. The arguments over efficiency and effectiveness seem reasonably consistent. Lots of studies based on students in small groups show that but these things are probably best represented in studies in a more professional context, and that data isn't always as readily easy to find. But there was a study carried out in four teams, each adopting test-driven development at IBM and Microsoft a few years ago. Most of the teams in this study were using traditional waterfall-style development, but with the addition of test-driven development. This is not an approach that I'd usually recommend because test-driven development works best as part of an ecosystem of more exploratory experimental practices. But probably it's a fairly good way to control the variables in the context of research like this. 
enabling the researchers to more clearly see the impact of TDD alone rather than the combined impacts of all of the other practices. The results of this study saw a significant increase in the quality in all of the teams based on measures of defects per thousand lines of code with numbers ranging from 40% fewer defects in the IBM team to between 60 and 90% in the Microsoft teams. This advance in quality did come at an estimated increase in the cost in terms of the time spent to develop the code though, of between 15 and 35% more time spent writing the code. This cost though was estimated subjectively by the management, but as well as being a subjective guess, this is also, I'm afraid, a fairly naive measure of productivity because it doesn't include the time and effort spent on identifying, reproducing, debugging and fixing the 40 to 90% more defects created by the teams not using TDD. As you learn the skills of TDD and your tests improve as design tools, as I will show you later in the code examples, everything gets simpler. In general, when we do take these savings into account, the picture is very different indeed. All these numbers from this study seem reasonable to me and are completely in line with my personal experience. But my personal experience also aligns very strongly with the findings of the DORA reports over the years, which evaluate the effectiveness of continuous delivery as a whole, rather than TDD in isolation. DORA says that teams that score well on the metrics of stability and throughput spend 44% more of their time working on new features. So the overall picture is quite dramatically more productive. We can't automatically assume though that everybody that's good at continuous delivery is also practicing test-driven development. I think though that we can assume that there's a pretty high correlation between the two though and that the link between the, them is in line with what I said earlier about TDD being a part of a whole collection of practices that combined encourage and support a significantly more effective, higher quality and more efficient approach to software development. The DORA predictive model includes this, which defines the practices that predict a successful approach to continuous delivery. This list includes automated testing, continuous integration, continuous testing and effective test data management, as well as trunk-based development, all of which are extremely highly correlated with and facilitated by the practice of test-driven development. So it doesn't really seem like a very big stretch to our credulity to me to believe that productivity is enhanced by TDD in the way that I'm suggesting here. When we look at its overall impact, at least, on the development process, rather than just the narrow, naive measure of the time it takes to develop the code and tests in the first place, as used in the study. After all, if typing is our limiting factor in software development, then we're almost certainly doing it wrong. Here at Continuous Delivery, we've got a special offer for the start of the summer. You can get big discounts on our highly reviewed course, Test Driven Development and BDD Design Through Testing. For this week only, for any viewer of the channel, you can get 25% off and any Patreon member can get 30% off the price of the course. So do check out the details in the description below and sign up quickly before the offer ends. So if test-driven development does help us to build better software faster and the data seems to suggest that that's the case, why isn't it more widely adopted? Well, first, I think that it is already probably more widely practiced than many people assume. Nearly all of the big players assume that TDD is, is a normal part of work at some level. Maybe not for everything, but for most of what they do. Beyond that though, there are clearly barriers to the adoption of test-driven development. After the study that I described, the IBM team that took part saw a significant increase in the number of defects when their focus on test-driven development reduced after the team grew with new members who weren't used to working with TDD. This decrease in quality was fixed when they re-established TDD as a normal part of their approach though. So what are these barriers to the adoption of test-driven development? The biggest barrier to test driven development called out by the people who don't do it is the one that we've already mentioned, longer time to develop the stories and the tests. But as we've already established, this is something of a myth or at least a measurement error. And I think that that's backed up fairly strongly by the evidence and the experience of the teams that do practice test driven development. Even so, it's true that development does feel slower at the point when we're writing the code, even for test driven development believers like me. But the evidence at least suggests 
that this is a mistaken subjective impression rather than a reflection of the truth. Development feels slower for several reasons though. One is that we are actually typing a bit more because now we need to type a test as well as the code to make that test pass. So if you measure your productivity by how much you type, I'd suggest trying programming in assembler and then see how fast you go. You'll certainly type less. Rather than the fact that we do end up doing more typing though, I don't think that's the main reason why it feels slower. The real reason is that we're thinking harder. And this is actually a good thing because now what we are thinking harder about is our design. The reason that test-driven development is difficult to learn has nothing at all to do with the skills needed to write the tests really. They're pretty simple on the whole. It's really about the fact that in test-driven development, we expose ourselves more directly and more immediately to the implications of our design choices. If your code is difficult to test, then it's poorly designed. Test-driven development may not be difficult to learn, but becoming good at software design certainly is difficult to learn. Learning those kinds of skills can take an entire lifetime. This fast feedback on your design choices that test-driven development delivers to us though, helps us to learn and improve our design skills much more quickly and much more effectively. At first, for TDD beginners, this design challenge presents another barrier that makes things feel slow. Because you're not only thinking more about design than you're used to, but you're also thinking and worrying about more about what to test. As you become more and more experienced as a test-driven development developer, this changes though from how do I test that to what do I want the code to do, which is a much better question to ask. And at the point that changing focus happens, we're now designing rather than testing really, which is the really big step forward in adopting test-driven development. It is this focus on design that is one of the most important big wins for the, a whole variety of reasons, not least because it makes for better tests as well as better designs. Test-driven development does not explicitly demand high test coverage. That comes as a side effect. It doesn't demand any specific design choices either, though it certainly encourages certain styles in design. This works at all levels, but I think it's easiest to see when we start at the higher level with acceptance test driven development or behavior driven development, where we specify whole features rather than just small parts of the behavior of our system. Here is a test that I really dislike. This test is full of implementation detail, so let's get rid of that. There, that's a lot better. Notice that it doesn't say any less than before. Actually, in many useful ways, practically it's saying more, but with fewer words. Now, with these changes, this test is just as true, for example, of a calculator with a screen and buttons as it is for a speech-based or thought-controlled calculator. So this test is much less likely to break if I upgrade my web-based calculator to a shiny new LLM-based speech recognition-driven device. This is not really about being able to upgrade from web controls to speech input though. This is about decoupling our test from the code that we want to write. Our aim is to specify accurately and precisely what we want to happen from the outside in. From the point of view of someone using our code rather than of someone thinking about this and specifying or testing the code. From the perspective of the person writing it. Specifying what we want the code to do rather than test how the code works. Here's another lower level example. Here are two horrible tests in order to test some badly designed code. We've had to break the encapsulation of our production code to make it testable. In this case, exposing protected members of our class to the test. Here is the, I hope, fairly obvious alternative. In these cases, the good test results in slightly more code in our production code. But it's better code because now we're being explicit about what's inside and what's hidden and what is outside and represents a sensible contract for interaction with our code. These are simple examples, but I hope that you'll agree that they demonstrate that by designing our code from the outside in, they have forced us to become the first user of our own code. This is a much more effective review of the utility and design quality of our code. TDD beginners often tell me that it's difficult to decide where to start. The real answer is to start by writing a test that defines the next simple step that you want the code to achieve. 
Ignore the implementation detail completely. Be disciplined and focus only on the public API to your code. Use the test to design that public API and try aim to design it to be as simple, easy and nice to use as you can, giving yourself an easier life in writing your test. If you don't know what you want your code to do at this point though, then clearly you aren't really ready to start writing code at all, are you? So go back and think some more about what it is that you want your code to achieve. Don't worry about how it will work, that comes later. TDD forces us to be clear and definitive about what it is that we're trying to achieve with our code, our objectives, while saying nothing at all about how that is achieved. So the really complex part of TDD is not the TDD, it's deciding what we want our code to do and deciding our, designing our code to be easy to use. And that is surely what we should be striving to achieve anyway, as long as we care anything at all about the quality of our output, don't you think? Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy our content here on the Continuous Delivery channel, please do consider supporting us via Patreon membership. There's details to that in the links to the description below. And as ever, thanks to our existing Patreon supporters for your ongoing support of the channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.